Hello and welcome to another edition of Love Rugby League Weekly with me, Dave Parkinson, and... Drew Derbyshire. Yeah! Um, we are expecting James to join us at uh, some point soon, uh, but we decided that we'd best make a start, didn't we? We're recording quite early, so we don't actually know if he's got out of bed yet. Hopefully. Hopefully he has. Hopefully he has. But another good weekend for uh, Rugby League, Dave. Really enjoyable. Really enjoyable. We had another game streamed on the Hour League service. Mm, very very good, very good. And uh, I went to a couple of games myself and uh, it was it was a much better game at the Halliwell Jones Stadium uh, last week than the week before, I might add. I'm really pleased to hear that, to be honest with you, Drew. Um, I thought what we'd talk about, the big one is obviously structure. We've got the Extraordinary, it's a meeting of the Extraordinary of the Rugby League, all the greater good. We mentioned about the cars in the car park, have they, uh, what I want to know, have they ordered the volivants, have they ordered pasties for everybody, will it be, you know, the, the little uh, cocktail sausages on sticks, or will it be chopped up cheese, mm. what, what do you reckon? I think it'd be a bit posher than that. You reckon? Mm. Am I yeah. not going posh enough? Might be Cumberland, Cumberland sausages for the Super League clubs and cocktail sausages for, for the World League clubs. Where it's, Everybody else. Where it's going, <laughs> but I don't, I'm not quite sure, but I, I, how good would it be to be a fly on the wall in that meeting? Uh? You know, everybody is, everybody that I've spoken to regarding Rugby League is just the buzzing to find out what will actually happen. Um, so you've heard a couple of my bar me suggestions over the last couple of weeks about structure. Mm. Have you had to think about what? I do, but my mind changes all the time, Dave. Well, one week I'm, I'm like uh, Super League should, uh, Super League clubs should benefit from more from from the structure because they're they're the one who are bringing the the money into the sport through through the likes of Sky Sports and, and obviously the BBC when they're on telly in the Challenge Cup. But then there are other times where I think, well, the championship clubs need to stay afloat. The League One clubs do, and so and so are the community game. I know we made that comment last week about the the community game, like the likes of Bala, etc., having a say in the structure. And I, I thought about it afterwards, and I thought, well, well, they probably should have a have a have a say in what in what goes on. But it then should really be a whole game approach. And mm, yeah, exactly. And but then I also think the players should have a voice in all of this. I, I was well, they're not organised, are they? Because I had this, because I mean, they've had the union, which they all could have joined a few years ago, which fell on its back. Well, side. Gareth Carvel is doing the, the best with the, the Rugby League Players Association to, to get that up and running well, and try to get it a voice. Is that in conjunction with, because uh, there was GMB, the union, mm. actually had a Rugby League section, didn't they? I don't, I don't is that I, in connection? No, I don't. I don't yeah, I think it's something different. I think it's something that Ka Gareth Carvel actually, left, I think he was at Salford, left Salford just to, to pursue this this role and and just trying to trying to get the players a voice because at the minute we're not having that are we? We're having the clubs and the directors of clubs and the chairman and the owners of clubs having the say, but we're not actually hearing what the players want to do. And I think has anybody actually asked them? But but we are no, I don't, I don't I don't think they're. At, there has been Have we asked questions. the media though? Because you know, it's that because uh, usually you well, ask a direct question and somebody does a sidestep on you. I mean, you know, they'll do one on the pitch on you. Well, the, the, there's an interview in in League Express um, this week with Gareth Carvel, and he says, "Well, the players do want to say," and uh, and uh, I saw Jackson Hastings tweet last week as well that the players do need a voice. They should have a voice and. And I've been quite impressed by Jackson Hastings since he's come over here. He's brilliant with the media. He, I've watched a couple of things with him. I've read a couple of articles. He comes across very, very well. And it just should, like the, obviously the, all the NRL boys are, are very well media trained, even when they're they're, they're, they're at an early age. I think he's only tw is he 22, 23. 22, I think, yeah. So he's very young, but he's brilliant with the media, and he comes across really well. He's not he's not afraid to to give his opinion, and then that, and that's what you want to you want to hear it as media. You want to hear on honest opinions of players is bad or good or whatever uh, so he comes across really well and I think if you did ask the majority majority of players well they probably uh, they probably would like a say they, they have a say in, in the Man of Steel so why not have a say in the in the future of the sports anyway how would you do it though because I mean if you look at it there's so many professional players you've done well, you've surely got to ask, ask all the championship guys as well do the, do the amateur lads get a say because they could sign professional what, what you could what you could possibly do is it not ask all of the players because obviously there's, there's maybe 30 players at every single club and it might be a longer drawn out 
proposal. But what you, you could captains. you could possibly do, well, you could possibly ask more than that. You could, you could possibly ask five, five players from each team. Say so, but, but the five more senior players. Uh, so say if you take Warrington for for example, you could have Chris Hill, Mike Cooper, Stephen Ratchford. Um, Josh Charnley and Daryl Clark, so the more senior, grounded players, the ones who have played international, and 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 just do that for each of the clubs, and then go into the championship, do the same, do the same for League One, and then just see what the overall, um, what their overall vote is, because okay. I think it, it is important for the players to have the say, because it's them who who put the bodies on the line every week for us, um. for our enjoyment. Sorry. Alex was watching our show last week and he said a quick comment on your league structure idea. I get the motive of having two leagues of professional teams, but I can't help but feel that less teams will mean playing the t same teams too many times. It waters down the significance of fixtures, in my opinion. What, yeah. what says you, Brigham? Well, I, can't, I do agree with Alex there because we, I think at the moment, in the, in the current structure anyway, we, we see teams play each other far too many times. We, 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 we're looking at Warrington playing Wigan on Friday night again. I mean, it's is this five times. This season, I'm not. I'm not too sure, but it seems like I've, I've been to. Well, I've been to every Warrington Wigan game this year. And I think <laughs> feel like I'm, I'm. It's like a monthly thing now. It's like Ground Dog Day. It's, a, well, it's, it's like in, in Scottish football, you, the old firm game is played about six times a season now. Is it? Yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous. So, so are you, is this your surreptitious way of saying, Dave, don't look at Scottish <laughs> football? I'm not, structure no, but, it, but it just gets a little bit. It, it just gets a little bit bland because, yeah. for example, say, say if you play each other three times at most in a season, or, or maybe four in, if you play them in the cup, well, that's much better because the, the fans get excited, the, the fans will pay their, their hard earned money to go to them games instead of saying, oh, well, they've got each other next month, so we'll, we'll, we'll just go to that one. Especially if they're like a family of four, it's a, it's a day do, is it, isn't it, for, it is, it is, for it families? Is, it, 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 yeah, yeah, 20, it. 20 pound a ticket, it's 80 quid, and then you've got food on top of that. It's, it's, it, it's, it's pretty costly, and you, you just, some families can't afford to go to, to every game. And, and like we said, we're Wigan Warrington, they played each other in the cup. They played each other obviously twice in the league. They're playing each other again. I mean, you can chuck they could possibly play each other again before the before the end of the season if they, they both end up making the grand final. You can chuck the same thing in with St. Helens and Wigan or well, yeah, yeah, Hull and yeah, Hull yeah. Kingston Rovers. I mean, yeah, yeah. They, they get them to play three times this season. And uh, when we can play uh, St. Helens. A couple of weeks ago now, I think the, the attendance were 14, 14 and a half thousand, and there were a couple of people saying, "Oh, that's a poor attendance for for a derby crowd." It's because we we see the, the derby, we see games five times a season. That's why we, we could see we can play Saints again before the season's done. So, are you arguing that there's too much of a good thing then, even under this current structure? Um, it, it's very fifty-fifty. You can you can both, you see both sides of the argument. If it if it was up to me, I'd be tempted to do a sixteen-team super league. And I know right, that. Okay, that's a bit interesting. That'll cause a little bit of controversy. But so are we go? Are we going here? Are we going here? <coughs> home and away, two games against yeah, each other. Yeah. Thirty-game season. Yeah. Top five playoff. Top five playoff. Yeah. And um, what what because if you look in the championship now, there's there's. Half of it's full time anyway. Half of it's professional and it well, nearly half of it's professional anyway. Six teams or five well, teams. Well, four, if you take it, five teams. This season, if you take at the start, if you take it at the start of the season, Leeds and Tunes were full time professional. Uh, London were professional. Uh, Toronto professional. Um, Featherstone, most of their players were on full time contracts, so you could argue that they could have gone professional. Uh, Toulouse Olympique professional. So the. the and then you've got the the likes of Halifax as well, who can, who are still in around that mix, even though they're they're not full time. So I think if you add just add them to the Super League, because let's face it, the wooden spoonies in Super League winners Vikings this year, they're they're not they're not ahead of Toronto Lee. Or, or any of them teams, what we've just mentioned, them championship teams, we've we seen London beat Witness, and I know that's the whole thing about the qualifiers, but why not add them to Super League? Because that, that can shake things up then, can't it? 
Okay. Imagine, imagine the, the the big teams that we always speak about. Well, since Catalans have been back on the climb, we've been speaking about how Perpignan's such a tough place to go. As Saints found out uh, last Saturday, we always we always think about oh well, France going to France for the weekend. Some some clubs go in a day and come back, uh, so it's always a tough place to go. Imagine having to do that to to go into Toulouse so it make it more difficult for the bigger teams as well so it'll mix it up go into the capital as well in London that'll mix it up as well I, I just think them teams who are in the championship can certainly compete mm. you, you, no, no disrespect to the, the likes of Hull KR and Widness at the at the lower end of the, the Super League table but I, I believe them championship teams could certainly mix it up with with uh, them Super League teams, and I, and I don't believe one of them teams would be a whipping whipping team. I'll, I'll chuck like wouldn't have been in Super League this year. I'll chuck something in here for that because um, something that James often talks about is player pool. Have we got the player pool to sustain then your sixteen clubs? Do you feel that we have? I, 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 are they going to step up? Um, is what I'm saying. Though I, th- that, I think we have in the championship. Yeah, I, I think we have because. Uh, if it, if you take the likes of London, Toulouse, Toronto, and um, Lee, for example, if they, if they were still full time, and they would still be full time in this structure, what what I'm, what I'm what I'm talking about, because you won't have to risk absolutely everything. They just start to risk their, their whole future. But there, there will be a player pool because you you're on about reserve leagues, and and the reserve the reserve grade would complement. That league. So, you, would you make it where you've got to have a reserve side if you're in the Super League? Is that one of the the the, the sort of things that you hang your hat on and say, listen, if you're coming in with the big boys, you need reserves. Yeah, yeah. Get yourself sorted out. Hundred percent. And uh, I was I was thinking the the, the other day actually that about the the reserves reserves league because I had a I had a good chat with London coach Danny Ward. And their, their academy is going great at the minute. They've got a good under-16 side. They've got a good under-19 side. They're actually beating... I was just about to say, they're regularly big, beating the yeah. big teams now, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. And, and when you... I've been to, to the Ealing Trail Final Sports Club a few times, and it's great facilities. And the, the, the academy teams always look very athletic, very... Very in shape. And That's Londoners for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they always look ve- very good. They, they're all, the fitness is always good. And I said, he mentioned, I was speaking to him about the under-19s and he, he mentioned something about the reserves and I was like, I'll test the water here and I'll ask him, could London have a reserves team, do you think? Because he said he would like to see it implemented and he said, I think we would we'd, we'd fully be able to have a reserves team. And, it, and if London can have a reserves team, who, ca- who, who can't? If uh, London can't, if London can have a reserve team being in the in the south, I'm going to question you a little bit more about your structure because obviously you've said right, 16 teams super league. Let, yeah, let, let, let me just um, go on to to the championship. So we've spoken about the the 16 teams super league. Would you still have promotion and a relegation? Yeah, or I would. would. Teams have to prove their worth. I, I'd just have one up, one down though. Okay. But so it'd be quite sustainable. And how would you do that? The bottom team gets relegated. Yep. Or do they play off against the winners of the championship? The, the, the bottom team would go straight down. Mm-hmm. So we finish like so. I come across as always slating slating witness a lot on these shows, but they finished bottom two years in a row. When when Lee and Tunis got relegated, it weren't weren't even Lee finished bottom of the table. It were witness. So they they finished bottom tw- twice in a row. That fiver because he keeps mentioning <laughs> me in a good light. <laughs> well, when they finished bo- bottom two years in a row, and say say they could have won every game of the qualifiers this year and, and stayed up, even even though they finished bottom two years in a row. That how how can that be be right? Well, they bounced back up last year, didn't they, with five wins? Well, exactly, exactly. Does it? It games. looks a little bit different this year, but. The possibility were there for them to do it again this year, and what's to say they would have done it again next year? So I would have had the the, the team who finishes with a wooden spoon going down, and then the top two in the championship playing off to go up. So into, you just have a straight grand final yeah. between one and two. Yeah, and I'd have none it, of this, uh, uh, this round robin stuff. No, for. and then I'd have the 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 team who finishes top, obviously the home team in the grand final. How many clubs would you have in the championship though? Because I mean, this is a key, a key point, because if you look at it at the moment, I think have we got 14 clubs in League One, we've got 12 in championship. Yeah, well... So if you're if, promoting four to Super League, well, that, would you, what would you think, be well, thinking? Well, that's very much 
the the main debating point here because it's all going smoothly until now. Because if you if you look at that the top half of League One, that you'd probably say that's that's good enough to compete with it with the lower half of teams of the Championship, the likes of York and Bradford. You'd think they'd they'd mix it in with with Swinton and Rochdale and Dewsbury, Sheffield. But then you have the lower end of the League One table where it's West Wales Raiders. Uh, Coventry Birds, Hemel Stags, uh, North Wales Crusaders. Hemel only had thirteen players. Only had thirteen players. See, there's something intrinsically wrong with the game if professional teams. And we're, 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 we always go 13. on about player welfare. We do, and we let teams like Featherstone with fourteen players a couple of weeks ago. We like Hemel thirteen. West Wales did it when they, they had a couple of under 19s players playing in the European Championships for Wales a, uh, a couple of months back. They play with 14 players because it was missing five or six players. It's, what, what's, what, what is the point? 13 players for Hemel Stags. No, try not to disrespect Hemel Stags, but they struggle with 17 players, don't they? And 13 players for a part-time team expecting to do the full 80 minutes, that can't, that can't be good at all. Apologies there, I derailed you, didn't I, as you were just explaining. Yeah, yeah. So, so you've got, then like you were saying, those guys who are really cut yeah, so, at the bottom of League One. So, so it, it will be very interesting to see what, what could you do there. Would you put them in the amateur game, possibly? Oh, we've done that before. And it killed two of the clubs. Mmm... Uh, Charlie got an invite back, so they had a, a second reprieve a couple of years later. But Nottingham out, Nottingham yeah. had a team. Nottingham City mm. uh, played at Harvey Haddon Stadium. It was like a converted, um, if you like, NFL field. It was like American football ports, <laughs> not rugby ones. <laughs> would be quite odd that. But uh, so, it, what, or would you would you just scrap League One and put uh, all them teams in the Championship then? Like a great big. A great big mountain. So, so, so two divisions, mm -hmm. the 16 team Super League. So, how many teams would you have then in the in the championship then? Uh, 18. Is that 18 then? Let's have a let's have a gander. So, you'd you'd promote your top. So, you you end up with so you end up with your 16 teams. So, yeah. then you've got two, four, six, eight. Plus be four, 20 ones. Mm -hmm. Plus uh, 14. So, 22 clubs. And then you could just do one on one, one away. Would you have a Would you have one big division? Then? Yeah, well, you, you, I think that's what what you'd have to do to, would to you keep do loop fixtures then against much of a muchness to to flesh you. Definitely not season out to thirty games. But I think I, I like Magic Weekend and I like the Summer Bash. I think the good concepts and I like events are really rare events for for sports like rugby league. But I think if we went to that, then they'd have to go because. You'd just be playing an extra fixture, and then it could get. So if Bradford <laughs> ended up playing North Wales Crusaders or something like that, then it, obviously it's uneven and stuff like that. So it, it can get a little bit out of hand because we've seen how close it is this year between them and York. Yeah. So I'm it'd be very interesting anyway. But um, it, yeah, that would be my structure anyway. <laughs> uh, David was watching us last week. Okay. Not me. David, he always like mentions us when he's listened to the Final Uta, so wherever he's listening or watching this, hope, hope we're doing you proud so far, mate. Uh, he said, interesting listening, watching your discussion with Drew. It shows how difficult reorganisation of the rugby league is. Even as you were talking, you were thinking of new options. So that's <laughs> when I was I was going on the fly last week, weren't every member? So that's it, why it, I thought I'd put the heat on but, you for a yeah, game. Well, exactly, but that, that's what... <laughs> Like that's every like pub chat at the moment, isn't it? When, if you're in a pub, you mates, you speak about the the structure, and, and you come up with so many different ways. So what's it going to be like for Super League, like for any rugby league club in this extraordinary meeting, like this big <laughs> extravaganza? I don't know whether it's going to be an extravaganza, <laughs> or whether it's going to be more a bloodbath, to be honest, amongst some of the clubs. But hey, what do I know? Um, I would love to be a fly on the wall in that. He one. actually suggested. Three times eight, so okay. sort of sitting in that with the top two full time uh, and one part time. But he says, "What do I know?" 
You've still then got a division outside of that, haven't you, to play but, but then you probably would have to play loot fixtures then, wouldn't you, with eight teams in a league? Or we'd be talking about, you know, multiple fixtures against each other again. But when, like you've just, just described at the start of the show there. So, um, I mean, it has happened before. We've had an eight-team division. It happened back in the 91-92 season. Uh, Lee were in the, it was the middle division, it was a Gary Etherington idea, if I remember right, or he was, had something to do with it, at the time he was, um, I think he was chairman or CEO of Sheffield Eagles, and uh, eight team, second division, played each other four times over the course of the season for a 28 game league. It was every good. And your face just sums up what it was like coming up the third or fourth <laughs> time against each other, it's like, oh no, it's Carlisle again, oh, oh no. We've got to go down to London. Like it, yeah, it's it's exactly that, isn't it? You you don't mind playing like the local teams, but then when you when you you are just playing the the teams who are who are not necessarily close to you, say it's um, St Helens, Huddersfield. If you play them four times, then that's when the tendencies do start to fall, isn't it? Um, I'm liking this as well because we have had some some really good feedback. Thank you very much for sending me some messages over over Twitter. So if you do want to drop me a message via that medium, I don't mind. I mean, you can do it at, at Love Rugby League. Yep. Uh, and Drew would be able to pick it up over the course of the week. Or if you want to send it to me, then at the Parky RL is where you need to get your message to. And as I say, I, I'll mention anybody to be honest. <laughs> um, we did get sent. And an interesting uh, thing as well, asking about whether we would be talking about asking Sheffield. about the weather. Ask well, we could we could yeah. talk about the weather, couldn't we? But asking about whether we could talk regarding um, the I suppose when it's scheduling the great bugbear, the Thursday night game, the Friday night we game. Had this the, the other week, didn't we? There's hardly any games played on a Sunday anymore. Um, Everyone seems to be a fan of Sunday rugby, and uh, I'm I'm all for it as well. But then, would that affect the amateur game because of players in the amateur game and juniors in the amateur game? Well, a lot of them play uh, play in the morning, don't they? Yeah, no. But, well, yeah, but if you if you look at the open age, oh, it don't matter. Borings has been going to Saturdays all season. They've not given a toss about cross fields or uh, Latchford Albion or. Um, Rylands, they don't give a toss. They've gone and got the games on anyway. I just, I, I don't agree with that. Because I mean, I noticed as well, that's been switched to a Saturday. The game against St Helens. I was readying myself up for it. I can't do it. I'll be up the motorway and ask them. And ask them for your, for your lease duties, I guess. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Um, so well, that's that's Sky, isn't it? And and I know what, we, Sky get a lot of stick at times, but the. They probably keep rugby league alive, don't they? Well, they do, they do. With the money they pump, because it's a massive sum. We're sat in the pockets, really, aren't we? We can't really do much else because they, they, the the pair master calls the tune, don't mm. they? Um, yeah. So Lee sent this message through, and he says that something needs to be done against scheduling. He can remember when they first had Thursday night games, and they said it would be all local derbies, and that's certainly not been the case. Do they still? The club still do um, the free coach travel on Thursdays. I'll be honest, I don't know because I've not heard it, I've not heard much of it this year. But I, I might be I might be totally wrong on on that one. But um, this they, they did court free put free coach travel on, didn't they? On Thursdays, they did. Thursday night games. It, uh, well, I think it was the the RFL who paid. Paid for. I don't think it was the clubs who paid. I think it was the maybe now where no Super League's taking all of the money pot. Apparently, at this extraordinary general meeting, maybe they should pay for it. Well, I, I, I honestly don't know. They still might do it, and I, I, <laughs> to be fair, I probably should have put, put more research into it, Dave. But um, go, go into the Thursday games. It's not I, I, I believe. In Warrington, is it? Or I, but I, well, it's Leeds th- Thursday games. Great. If it's not your team, if it's your <laughs> team, poor. And it's true. But Be- because because I bet, the th- I bet the Thursday night games get arguably more viewers than the Friday night games. Because on Friday nights, obviously, people go out or people are busy. Or they're at their own Thursday- games, because there's a lot of clubs that seem nice. Well, of, Friday, of course. And I think Thursday games, because there's only one game on on a Thursday, and it's a t- top level game, then you'll have. I, th- I think Thursday games. 
would bring in more more figures than than a Friday night game. Lee continues. Depending depending obviously on on what type of game and if it, it you can't be expected for Huddersfield and Castleford to get more views than Leeds v Wigan or whoever. But I think uh, on average, I think Thursday games would, would probably do do better than Friday. Lee continued with this point he says please stop Thursday night games it's a so called family sport where we want mums dads and kids to watch and, and as a result if it's a school night exactly and, and, and then, then that's the complete flip side to it that's that's what I'm saying Thursday night games are brilliant if it's your t- if, it, if it's not your team because you can watch it on telly uh, and you, your kids might watch on telly and might not you can watch it on telly and it's done for what quarter to ten half nine Whereas if it's your team, you've got to go there, you've got to come home, and it's and it's a longer longer process. It's probably eleven o'clock by the time you get in, and obviously if you've got young young children, then they'll obviously want to be in, in bed a few hours before that time, haven't they? So it's it's a it's a tough one because it's I know I, I do sympathise sympathise uh, with all, with those comments made because it is a fa- it's they say it's a family game and. Uh, Sunday Sunday afternoon it'd be be much more preferred I think to to the families of the game anyway rather than uh, the broadcasters. Dave again added a good point. He says he doesn't think that a Catalan's home game has ever been moved to a Thursday or a Friday. I think there was a couple of early ones in the Friday nights, weren't they, when they first started? But when they first started, but I think they said, is it is it being sports their broadcaster in yeah. in France where where Sky Sports take the feed from. Um, but but I, I I think that's that's quite good on a on a Saturday, and I think it's quite French really that they, uh, they've got the, the, the <laughs> definitely French. It's uh, it's uh, he's got he's got the rugby league on on a, on a Saturday, and it's it's kind because of, it's kind of an occasion, isn't it for yeah. for the fans over there? Just to continue Dave's point, he says with the possibility of a Toronto or a Toulouse in Super League, uh, they wouldn't be playing on a Thursday or Friday generally either. Uh, it's hardly fair, and the RFL have just moved that test match in Liverpool with little thought for the fans. Yeah, the test match was a bit of um, a, a bit of bad scheduling because if it if you think Liverpool or Everton, whoever are, are away that week, the other ones at home. Hmm. So there's going to be a, at least one football game in the city that weekend, and I just think whoever's checked the fixture out. It's just, I don't know, maybe I had a, a, a brain fart here because, I don't know. Hey, we've got so much to consider in rugby league, haven't we? It's, and, I, and I do I do feel very, very sorry for the people who've booked hotels, especially, like, it's all right for us, Dave, being uh, Lancastrians and, and being able to live at home and, and, and go to the game. Yeah. But for, for the likes of people who are from, like, Hull and... And there's people Berber, that's already booked their tickets. 100%, booked, yeah, yeah. They, they booked the travel, I think, I think it was... Uh, York City Knights media manager Gavin Wilson, who, who who'd already booked his his hotel, and obviously so, he can't get a refund on it, so it's a couple of hundred quid. What this uh, is almost drain. saying is that you know, like, don't bother pre-booking anything; just wait until it's announced. But the thing is, it's been announced for months anyway, hasn't it? This it has. It's and I've, I've tickets been on sale as well for tickets for a while. Sale, yeah, so yeah. I, so people would have been buying them, and people would have been been planning their weekend. Uh, around that Saturday, and now it's uh, taking place a day later. But it's trying not to take too much shine off the game because it's it's going to be a fantastic game, and I can't wait for it myself. I'm going to be going to be going to the game, and uh, I'm looking forward to covering it. Uh, thanks for going into a bit more detail, there, and thanks for all your comments as well. Really enjoy going through those, so I'd like to do that on a, a more regular basis. Uh, do remember you can share, comment, retweet. Put this out as many times as you can. Uh, We want everybody to be seeing it. Um, Because we don't just want me and him him talking to nobody. We want your involvement as well. (laughs) We do. And and it's it's nice going through them comments. And thanks to everyone who's who's sent them in. And we want more to discuss next time. You was asking me about what else we were going to... But next time we'll be discussing... uh, what actually what happened, actually happened if at we the, the meeting? If we get to know about it, because we normally re- we normally record on a Tuesday or Wednesday, um, so hopefully by the time we're recording next week, I hope we I hope we know what's going to be happening Otherwise, if the meeting's on Friday. Oh hell, could break loose in here! I'm telling you. I, I just won't turn up next week. <laughs> 
I just won't turn up. If we know if Drew's not here next week, then we know something's happened with Wigan in this structure. <sighs> um, right, what else are we going to talk about? You you were suggesting before we went on air about um, what was that topic you were saying about? Can't remember what was I saying, Dave. You said about bands. Oh, bands! Yeah. yeah I said about because I said yeah. yeah, blossoms have been booked for Old Trafford. Yeah, he thought he thought it was on about blossoms being booked for grand you wasn't grand meaning, final entertainment. See, but I, I, I was. I was down with the kids mentioning blossoms. You know, because I mean, you know all about them. You know, no, yeah. but you know, you yeah. know, you're much younger than I am. Well, I'm, I'm about to think I'm younger than you. Do. <laughs> you just don't look it. I'm looking it. <laughs> Bit harsh. Um, but yeah, bands. I, Salford have, have copped a couple there uh, this week. Jackson Hastings banned for two games. I think he's quite lucky with that, to be honest. Uh, like he he been caught him. I think, wasn't there only 15 seconds left at game yeah. as well? It was, it was a little bit hectic, that, wasn't it? And Luke Burgess got a, a one match ban. Deserves for, that as well. For a high tackle. Um, no, so. They're, they're, got, Mike Cooper's also yeah, been banned. But as well. they're, they're going to be quite big, big misses for the Red Devils, I think. Especially Jackson Hastings, because he has been a revelation since he's since he's gone to the AJ Bell Stadium. I know we're going to go on to the uh, the sort of the results and talk through them in a, a little bit more of a smidge of detail in but a little just, while. But uh, just just speaking about Wigan Warrington on Friday, no Mike Cooper for Warrington, That's and a, uh, isn't it? he's been in great form this season. And he's fully deserved his his call up back to the England squad. We don't know. Obviously, we don't know yet if he'll play against uh, the the Kiwis this autumn, because obviously the squad will end up having to to be cut down. Mm. But uh, Mike Cooper fully deserved that England call up, and uh, England Knights representative Joe Greenwood. Uh, picked up a one match ban as well so it'd be interesting to to see how the club's fur on because Greenwood's been massive for Wigan since he's gone what did you make of that incident I have to admit I don't I can't actually remember it which one the, the Greenwood one I, I can't remember it yeah I, I mean I know that was a game that largely passed me by from being truthful yeah it was a, it was a scrappy affair wasn't it and it was just job done for Wigan in the end uh, yep so um the next point that I wanted to discuss is that you might see our little uh, our league advert in front of us here because it's back again at the weekend. He's, he's just plugging his own work. I want more people to watch it. Just plugging his own, own work all the time. So yeah, so North Wales Crusaders take on taking on Doncaster again. I think it should be a really good, tasty affair that and one that uh, I hope many people that are watching this will have already subscribed to our league for. Yeah, I, I quite like the the idea. I think we, this is what we've been screaming out for, isn't it, for for a while now? Live streaming of games. Did you see any of the coverage from last weekend? I have to admit, I was at, I was at a game, so I didn't manage to. No, I didn't. Watch I didn't actually. I just um, wonder whether it was the same no. sort of. Setup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I d no, I, d I didn't. I only watch I only watch yours, Dev. Oh, thanks. Fully committed to yourself, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't but it's it's great because if you're not busy, then you can watch it. Because there's there's not normally any rugby league on on uh, Sky or BBC or anything on Sundays. I know there's a there's a, there's a couple of games this Sunday which we'll get get into a little bit later on in the in the qualifiers. None of them are, uh, are on are on telly, are they? So and that's a little bit surprising because there's, there's no, but it's a shame because there were there were three qualifiers games last Sunday and they weren't all, none of none of them were were on Sky. I don't know if it's because some some of the clubs are championship clubs competing in the games and the only one to show Super League teams. I'm I'm not too sure on what what Sky want to do there, but. I think Sunday games will be another one, quite like Thursday, because uh, Sundays are seen as a, a relaxed day, aren't they? A chill out day for most people, and if you can put your uh, your feet up on the couch for a few hours, uh, maybe have a beer or two, now, watching the rugby. Your then. Sunday here? No, no, no. Oh. Well, see, there I was thinking that you was talking about your Sunday roast beef dinner, feet up, bits of. Uh, Bits of nibbles next to telly, watch your ne our league app. Put oh, you were just about to say another platform, weren't you, then, Dave? <laughs> you were just about to say another platform. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, well, some, sometimes you, you don't do anything on Sunday and you, you, you end up watching the football or something. But if, if, the, if the rugby's on, then I'd, I'd no watch the, the rugby, wouldn't I? No competition. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, obviously I'm involved in that, so <laughs> maybe I'm biased, but. Um, yeah, join He's in. trying his best to get people to sign up. Join in, tune in, share, like, comment, 
But to be fair, I know what joking aside, it's it's actually going to be a good game, isn't it? I'm, I'm quite quite looking forward to it as well. And from speaking to a couple of people involved at, at North Wales, they look like they're going to be uh, putting a couple of the kids on that have come through their own structure. Um, the so rare team, the, the, well, the the reserves, effectively. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, they've got the first couple of, of people that isn't are ready it, off the production line. Isn't it strange, Dave? Uh, an expansion team in Wales, a League One club having a reserves team. Yeah, but they started off playing in a league structure and unfortunately had to come out of that. Uh, so they've been playing friendlies for for all the season. But still, still got, got a team. Still got a reserve still team. Got that team. So well done. To Some North Super Wales. League clubs don't even have under 19s teams, under 16s teams. Never mind reserves. On to the next topic, Dev. Have you kicked away your sort box? Is that it? Have you put it away for, for now? Go on, right? Dave. Sorry. Oh, right. okay. Sorry. <laughs> well, I know it's your great big book, but... And, uh, because, I mean, we were it's, both... You know, it's baffling because, it, because there's women's teams in, in the Women's Super League, big advocate of it, brilliant. There's women's teams of Super League clubs with under-19s teams for the women's game, and, and then there's other Super League clubs who don't even have under-19s or under 16s or academies of scholarships for for uh, the the men's team what which is meant to be like the the pinnacle or Drew, Drew, Drew. whatever take your tablets son it's okay you can come back down to earth we'll discuss it again next week you'll get your chance you'll get your chance again i will give you your opportunity but i, I know that you're a big advocate for it so um rant over there sorry yeah can can we get can we get back to this schedule go on Right, next up, talking points from the games at the weekend. So let's start with, first of all, uh, the results from this weekend. Started on Thursday night, Wigan 25, Wakefield 10. I thought this was a drip and a drab game, but I can fully understand there was a lot of emotion behind it. We obviously had what happened with Sarginson losing his brother uh, the weekend before. Um, so there was always going to be a lot of emotion. And, and I think just the fact that he got through it, the club got through it, it's fair play. Yeah, it, it is, and I think we're going to have, have got a very good team spirit. I think they've got one of one of the best team spirits in in the sport, really. I know, I know people think I'm probably biased, but they always seem to care for one another in in great great detail. And I know Sean Wayne in his post match um, press conference, he, he dedicated the win to to Dan Sargenson's uh, late brother who who passed away the the week before. And, the, the week before he had a stunning game against St. Helens, um, Dan Sargenson, but uh, very sad about him, but f wow, took nerves, didn't it? Took, it did. took big cojones it to, to, to play, Just to play the game. No, balls. Oh. Balls. Because, uh, no, no, you say that, you know. And, um, but, I, but it actually, did, it yeah. did. It, it took big guts and fair play to to Dan Sargenson for, for putting his hand up to play and uh, just going on to play as well but uh, we can always seem to have that that great team spirit because the week before the plays I spoke to George Williams he said well they, they beat Saints they, they had that burning ambition inside them to beat Saints for the departing personnel and I don't know it's, it's just the, the thing with the Warriors they just always seem to strive for one another that a little bit more I think as well they're a fantastic club with the way they look after people they are superb. Uh, I mean, I know she's just moving away from the game, but there was that announcement uh, about Macaulay. Macaulay as well, wasn't it? Macaulay Davis? Macaulay Davis, yeah. He's, he only turned 22 last week, so he, was, he probably made the decision when he was 21 to uh, to retire from the sport due to, well, he was playing for Swinton Lions on due registration at the time, for the people who didn't know. And then he had a. He went off, left the field with a serious concussion injury, and then the protocol to to come back for those of you who don't know, you have to go th through uh, several medical tests uh, through the the next week to to play in the following game, and then it, that's when it was found out and and uh, detected that there was a pre-existing uh, brain condition. I'm not going to try to pronounce the name of the brain condition because I can't, but uh, it's very very sad and. I used to to work for for Wigan and commentate on the academy games, and Macaulay Davis was a, a a very good player, very good bat rower. He always always ran a good line, and uh, 
England Academy International. Very, very sad. Made his Super League debut in, in 2016 alongside uh, Carl Shelford, who also made his debut in a win over uh, Wakefield at the DW Stadium. Very, very sad. Um, and it's, it's just... Uh, it's just sad to, to see a player, a promising player, uh, player's um, career just come to an abrupt end like that, knowing that he'll never have the chance to play a rugby league game uh, ever again. But but the way that, that McCauley's spoken about it and his mum on Twitter has, has spoken about it, the club have handled it uh, fantastically well. Steve McCormack, play well for a manager at, at the Warriors, is working closely aside McCauley to uh, put him on the next path in life and, and help him uh, get a, a new job or career or ambition, what he wants to do. And uh, it's just credit to the club for that. So I, I think in just sort of three things over the last two weeks, Wigan have shown their class. They have shown why they are at the very, very pinnacle of our sport and why they will remain there because they just do things right and I think there's a lot to be said about the way that you treat people, the way that you do things. You've got to show that you care. We keep saying rugby league's part of the family. Sometimes we don't always see that. 100%. But at Wigan, you have that in abundance. And uh, another thing as well from, from the Wigan club, they, they launched a heritage shirt. Yeah, fair enough. They'll never, they won't wear the heritage shirt in, actually in a game. But they've launched heritage shirts and past players, any past players, like there's, there's a thousand and two hundred or something uh, heritage numbers, and any one of them players can, can just go and pick up the the heritage shirt with the name on the back and the heritage number, and that's just a, a classy touch, isn't it? And uh, Tom Davis, the winger now, his great grandfather. Gwyn Davis played for, for Wigan and he picked up his heritage shirt for him the other day and it's just a great touch and you, I, ju I just want to see more of this because I don't I think as a sport we said it we said it last week yeah, we don't I don't think we celebrate heritage enough we've got a fantastic heritage in a, in rugby league follow Swinton Lions on Twitter and you see their great heritage as well uh, and players who, who used to play in the fifties and the sixties when Swinton were were at the peak. And you see records. What 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 are astonishing, astonishing try records and a number of appearances. And you don't you just don't see any barely any clubs uh, celebrate it nowadays. Quick word on on sort of heritage because uh, recently, obviously with the Doncaster thing, I've been looking at there's a there's a Doncaster stats website which is absolutely fantastic. If you get the opportunity, just have a look. Doncaster Rugby League stats. It's uh, run by Rob Terrace, and he's doing a brilliant job on it. Um, all right. So, and he's got records going all the way back. If you click on like an opponent, you get how many games he played against that opponent, all the results, when it was. It's like a treasure trove. I love this. It's, it's great. And another thing about the Warriors, it, I just keep getting little things pop into my mind. I saw on Twitter a couple of weeks ago that they did a post and. Uh, it was a fan, a fan's 100th birthday, mm -hmm. and they, they just sent, and Joe Burgess went round and, and took took a shirt with 100 uh, the the elderly lady's uh, name on the back, and it's it's just what a classy touch. It's it's so simple to do, but it, and it probably probably takes an hour of Joe Burgess's day yeah. up. But was there anything said? You know, did she not say I want to Billy Boston? To <laughs> <laughs> no, it was only a picture, but. It was just a classy touch and, no, and, right. and things like that. It just uh, makes you appreciate our sport. Um, so, yeah, so big up to Wigan. It's not often you'll get a later actually praising Wigan to the hill, but they, they certainly deserve it for the way they've handled themselves. They're portraying a lot of stuff at this moment in time, so, you know, keep it up. Um, back on the results, we saw a real topsy-turvy game, didn't we, at the weekend between Warrington and Huddersfield. This was a game you were at, Drew, uh, working for not one but two media outlets on the night. Busy lad. Yeah, I was very busy, and uh, I was on commentary for the first time in oh, maybe maybe two years or something there. But I, I enjoyed it, and I enjoyed the game more more so. I, I was there the week before, as you said, as we said before. Warrington eighty, Hull FC ten. It was the dreamiest and drabbiest game I've been to in a long, long while. And uh, I was glad to to get back at the the Halliwell Jones Stadium last week, and uh, it was a very very good game, very good game. Huddersfield made it very difficult. I was v very very impressed by uh, Huddersfield's youngsters. I know Jake Mamo got the 
the hat trick. I was so going to say, yeah, because he was playing out of position on the wing, wasn't he? Yeah. So he, he'll kind of steal the, the headlines on as far as Huddersfield are concerned because he got the hat trick. One of the tries, very, very questionable. The ball bounced up higher than this table. So uh, when, it was right, okay. go- when it was going over the That's line, a long so, way, that. Well, so, so I think uh, I think one of the tries were questionable, but the senior uh, twins, I know Louis Senior didn't play, but is it Ein Senior? In his senior? In his senior, is I it? I think it's in his, in his senior. Brilliant player on the wing. Very, very promising player. I think he's about six foot four. Oh, only, only 18 years so of age. But like a brick door as well. Yeah. I <laughs> see what you did there. <laughs> see what you did there, Dev. And uh, Jay Wardle, the centre. Yes. He's very, had some raps very, on him already this yeah, season, hasn't he? Very, very, very promising. Get, oh, he gets stuck in as well. He's good to watch. Good to see him getting some game time as well, to be honest, you know, because they, they've sort of chucked him in. And it's just a shame, really, that their season has now ended in, in sort of pursuit of the top four, because it would have been interesting to take it down to the final week, wouldn't it? Mm, yeah, and I know we give a lot of six of these dead rubbers, and probably rightly so in, in many respects, but then it does give the the club's the chance to play some of these youngsters and Sam Wolford was speaking to him after the game and he, he said well we will we'll look to to build some more youngsters in before the season's out and just give them that little bit more experience at the top level without them necessarily being much pressure but going going, going he's on been linked the, with the island job isn't he as well Sam Wolford yeah he has been linked with the, with the island job would he do a good job probably mm. um, he seems to have his head screwed on the right it, way doesn't he but it's going to be interesting because there was on about scrapping heritage players would Simon Wolford want the heritage players to play for Ireland I think I think he probably would wouldn't he you would think so so that's an only topic that they've mm. but uh, Sam Wolf has done a brilliant job since he's gone. Made it very difficult for Warrington who, and Warrington still had it all to play for. Um, Danny Brough missing a 50 metre uh, penalty goal right at the death so it could have been a, um, a draw in, in the end. But I mean, the draw uh, would have been good enough for Warrington anyway, wouldn't it? It would have but I think Warrington just deserved the win anyway. I think they were the better team on the night. I think what about Bryson Goodwin? They controlled the game well. Seven tries in two games for Bryson Goodwin. Where was this, could he, could where he, was this try scoring form earlier in the year? He's, he's not played for New Zealand since 2013 but could he could he barge his way into that New Zealand uh, setup? I don't think they'll want to pick him, will they? Because he's playing over here. They see it. This is just a, a feed of rubbish mm. competition, don't they? Yeah, possibly, possibly. But Tom, Tommy Lillewine uh, still plays for, for New Zealand, doesn't he? He's he's still over here, but um, he's he's been brilliant for for Warrington this year. We mentioned it a couple of weeks ago, Dave. He's he's been a real coup for for Warrington. He's probably been one of the the signings of the off season. I, I, yeah, has there, has there been a better signing in the off season than Bryson Goodwin for Warrington? Uh, for Warrington? Uh, well, Probably for anyone, not. for anyone in the off season, a new signing. I don't know because for me, he's not done. He's not done as much as he should have done, Bryson. No, I, I, I think he's he's done a great job for Warrington. I think he should have been scoring more tries than he has done, and he, he kept getting head knocks, didn't he, in these early few games? So he didn't really settle. It took him some time to settle. And uh, Ryan Atkins returned from nearly th- nearly three months uh, on the sideline. He he played in the centre. Toby King moved into the back row, so it was interesting to see Toby King in the back row, more of a centre. Is Toby King, um, but it was good to see Atkins it's back out on the field. Big enough for that position. Yeah, he is. He's good under the eyeballs. Well. Puts a lot of pressure on on defences uh, when uh, Tyrone Roberts and uh, Kevin Brown put an eye kick in there. So you was royally entertained at this game. Yeah, there were. Yeah, it was a it was a great game, and um, probably Sky Sports uh, probably picked the wrong one to be on telly. Yeah, for some strange reason, they went off to Hull, didn't they, to cover Hull against Castleford, which was a bit of a non-event, to be fair. I mean, 18-0 at half-time to Castleford. Um, arguably, having seen some of that game since, they should have been further in front. They should have scored more points in the second half than they did. I think they let Hull off the hook, though. They could have really made things interesting. Yeah, and some people were saying that it was a spirited performance from Hull. It should be, though. You said they're at home. But was it? I don't. It was. A, it was a better po- performance from the one the week before. But were it a good performance? If if Hull, Hull on the day, you'd expect them to make, possibly beat Castleford at home. 
you, you certainly expect them to, to for it to be a very close close game, maybe four, six points in the game. I was really pleased to see it, Maloudi. It, it was very, very clear, wasn't it? Very convincing it for was, Castleford. It was, but I was very pleased to see Maloudi step up after having scored that fantastic mm. try for Donny the week before. And he scored another fantastic try for, yeah. for Hull in the game, another uh, full-length effort, or closer full-length, should I say. Very briefly... Catalans and St. Helens. I have to admit, didn't see a lot of this game, uh, but close as you like. And I understand it was a real late fight back from St. Helens, which snatched the points. Yeah, it was. I think, was it 22 points to 18 for Cas- Catalan with about 10, 10 minutes to go? And uh, late tries from Johnny Lomax and uh, Wales International Morgan Knowles. Who... No Ben Barber in that game either. No, no. I th- I Has he booked his tickets yet? <laughs> Is that what he was doing? Is that why he didn't play? Well, uh, I've noticed NRL.com. The the National Rugby League's uh, is it sister site or official site? Uh, the they've done an interview with uh, Valentine Holmes, and he says it's uh, uh, Ben Barber's a, a very good signing for the North Queensland Cowboys. So all right, so he's got the exclusive, but none of us know yet. Yeah, I don't. I, th- I think it's uh, a little bit disrespectful to to publish that when I don't know I, because it's not been announced by Saints. I, I, has it? It's not. No, I don't think so. Uh, so sure I, I think because yeah. because they they're going as always. It's basically confirmed. I think. Uh, pouring Ben Barber's a good sign, but who knows? Just let him let, let them get on with it. But uh, we we can't take away what a good player Barber's been for the competition. Uh, so well done to Saints. They've just about sewn up. I think they need one more point just to confirm that they're going to get that league leader shield. Uh, thanks to this uh, spirited run that Wigan's on. So just putting a bit of pressure just, on. Just uh, going back to that game, Aaron Smith made his debut for for St. He's Helens a good in the in, a good little player. Uh, in the in the number nine role, and uh, it was uh, it was very good, very impressive. He nearly scored on his debut, but uh, it was stopped by a, a magnificent try saving effort from David Mead. Uh, I understand we're running out of a little bit of time really so I just want to flash through these results if you'll just entertain me for the next couple of minutes cool go on so in the qualifiers it was Hull Kingston Rovers 38 Halifax 24 uh, at one stage though Hull KR led by 24 points to the line I understood that picked up a few injuries as well potentially moving forward so that could disrupt them uh, this was the result of the qualifiers weekend for me London Broncos 34 to lose Olympic 8 I wasn't expecting that at all no, massive win for the Broncos, and it's uh, a win that could probably put them in a in a place for the the million pound game. Certainly puts them in with a, a box seat of a chance, doesn't so it? So it's got it's got it looks as though it might come down to points difference as well. Uh, Salford getting what I thought was quite a convincing win overall against Toronto. I mean, they raced into that large advantage. Toronto fought back. Um, Salford went down to 12 after Burgess got sent off and then there was that incident with Hastings right at the end but I never really worried too much looking at that that Salford were going to lose that game No, they always looked comfortable didn't they and uh, I think it was a very, very good performance again from the halves in Jackson Hastings and Rob Lowe even though Jackson Hastings did that with uh, 20 seconds uh, to spur One final kick at Widnes because they lost to Leeds Rhinos I didn't watch the game, but we were speaking to, to the gaffer, uh, James Gordon. Do you reckon this is why he's not shown up? It's just been me and thee again, hasn't it? There's a, there's a chair, there's, there a, there's an empty chair, he was, re- was ready for James, he's not showed up. Thanks James, for all your contributions. Uh, but, but, but from, from speaking to James, who, who was at the game, he, he said it was a better performance, one of the best performances uh, under Francis Cummings for, for Widnes. Um, but he, said, he did say that uh, it was a typical uh, Danny Betts performance, that gritty and determined effort. So I think uh, James is gunning for uh, the hashtag bring Betts back. Uh, really? Uh, <laughs> hashtag, yeah, yeah, I think, <laughs> I think uh, he'll, he'd like to see Dennis back at the club. Uh, into the Championship Shield again, I'll just flash through these results. Batley Bulldogs 26, Rochdale Hornets 12, Dewsbury Rams 32, Barrow Raiders 12, Barrows, social media people getting themselves in a bit of a, a fix, um, sort of having a go at match officials, which is easy to do if you're a spectator, but you shouldn't really be doing it on an official No, because it's, like it's, it's the, the voice of a club, isn't it? Yeah. So I, and you, I don't think you can speak on behalf of everyone, but it's 
it's obviously just um, a mistake. Swinton Lions were spirited, especially in the first half against Lee Centurions. Lee eventually winning 54-10 in that one. And on Friday night, Friday night lights, as the uh, Sheffield people were, were billing it as, uh, Sheffield Eagles 12, Featherstone Rovers 32. So both Lee and Featherstone, in some semblance, a good form heading towards this uh, uh, Championship Shield final. Yeah, it's just about whoever gets a home game, isn't it, in, in, in that one day? And Feather in the box seat for that at the moment and don't look like they're going to rel relinquish it with just a couple of games remaining. Uh, where it is all hotting up is in the Betfred League 1. You had Coventry Burst 12, North Wales Crusaders 36. That's Crusaders third win on the bounce now. Uh, Keith Cougars went down to a heavy home defeat against Doncaster by 50 points to 6. Good to see Doncaster sort of finding some semblance of form and I read somewhere that they've scored a thousand points in a season for the first time ever so Richard Orn's doing something particularly right mm. as far as their attack goes London Scholars had a massive win over Hemelstad but we've already mentioned part of the reason there 76-6 in that one uh, Newcastle Thunder perhaps getting the uh, share for the result of the week along with London Broncos they defeated Workington Town 50 points to 22 where did that come from? I told I tell you Dave, Newcastle are doing some special things at the moment. You do with Jordy accent. You say, "Why, hey lads, come on the, come on the tune." I can't. No, I can't. Dave. <laughs> I can't, Dave. I, oh, I'm on. not. No, I'm not doing it on camera. I'm not no, doing it on no, camera. Right. But, uh, but, but, uh, but, but exactly. And Workington, Workington have come, went into that game on the back of a few good results as well. So right. they stunned them in a way, and they, they kind of, kind of shocked them. But they've got some good players. Um, Newcastle, I heard France International, Remy Margini, put in a man of the match display, so fair Goal play. Goal there as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I noticed as well going down to uh, West Wales Raiders, I said this would be a free hit for Bradford, we were expecting it. To, you know, I said 70, I you said, said more. I said 100, didn't I, I think? And they got the 100, they had 104 points. Always there. right, I am always Stop right, Dave. It. I am always right. Where are you in this tipping league? I, was, I said to you on Friday, I'm not in it. Say, well, you should have been. But on, on Friday, I, sa I, I, I said everything, didn't I? I said, Bryson Goodwin will get one at March. He got one at March. I'm not, I'm not giving you the same credit that that commentator did. Fair, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> but Dave Bitch You've got to do it again for next week. <laughs> so I'm going to come to you for your predictions on this week in a minute. But, uh, and uh, Whitehaven 46, Hunslet 10. That's a notable result. And York City Knights just edging out Oldham by 10 points to 6. Just going back to that West, West Wales game. Second highest attendance in League One at West Wales at Stebbenheath Park. I think it was at 826. At Stebbenheath. Fair play to those travelling Bradford fans. They do get everywhere, don't they? Come on, give, give oh, West Wales a bit of credit. No, Come no, on. But that would have been mainly Bradford fans travelling, wouldn't it? No, no but they, they did um, a little thingy as well, a little, they did a promotion, a little, little promotion as well. And so well, hopefully money, that's that's some... Weren't they raising money for a, a local charity as well? Was yeah, they was. Yeah, they yeah. Did, so. so it was, so it was well, a great yeah. effort by yeah. the Raiders. OK. Um, so that leads us nicely on to this week's fixtures, which we'll uh, run through at a rate of knots. Uh, all starts off on Thursday in the Betfred Super League Super 8s. Castleford against Huddersfield Giants. Action moves over to Friday, St Helens against... Oh, we're not doing predicts. Paul, I'm coming to you. Wakefield against Catalans. Wigan against Warrington. In the qualifiers... Uh, we've got Leeds against Salford on the Friday night. On Saturday, it's Hull Kingston Rovers against London Broncos. Toronto Wolfpack against Toulouse. Uh, Witness Vikings at home to Halifax in a game that's, I'm sure, that Sky are rubbernecking at it, really. Because they're, they're confident, I think, that Witness are going down. <laughs> I think that's the only reason that one's getting televised I think, I Saturday think, afternoon. I everyone's, think everyone's confident, aren't they? Everyone's rubbernecking at that. Into um, I'll be going to that game, I think. Oh, well, I'll be there as well. I'll see you there. See you there, uh, Yeah, so into the Championship Shield, we've got Barrow against Swinton, Batley at home to Sheffield Eagles, Featherstone host Dewsbury Rams, Lee Centurions on the road at Rochdale. In Betfred League 1, on Saturday, West Wales Raiders take on Keithley Cougars. On Sunday, it's Hemel against York City Knights, Hunslet against Newcastle Thunder, Oldham against the Bradford Bulls, which looks like it could be a really good tie. Uh, Whitehaven against Coventry Burrs. Workington against London Scholars. And the big one on the Our League app. 
Another plug for Dave's work. Uh, North Wales Crusaders against Doncaster. Right, I've been through that. Have your say, sir. Okay, so in the fixtures, we'll, we'll just go in and send it uh, going in order, uh, according to Lee Express anyway. Castleford will just feel, I think, Castleford at home. St. Helens to beat OFC at home and clinch the league leaders, lift the league leader shield as well. Uh, Wakefield Trinity Catalan, Dave, what are you saying for that one? Wakefield. Mm. I'll just go Wake, Wakefield because they're the home, the home team. Wigan or Warrington? Wigan. Wigan. Leeds, Re- uh, Salford. Leeds. Home advantage. Leeds, be- just because Jackson Hastings isn't playing. Actually, no. Salford. Ooh, that's a big Salford. Change. Right, okay. Uh, Hulk are London. Hulk are. Hulk are at home, yeah. Uh, Toronto to lose in Canada. They've had some good games against each other this season. These two. Um, I just, uh, it's just something about Toronto in Canada. Toronto I can't, I can't, I can't see past it. the Wolfpack. Uh, witness Halifax. I'm going witness on this one. You know what? I'll go Halifax by one to really seal the deal. Scott Morrell one pointer. Never know. Uh, uh, West Wales Raiders v Keithley Cougars League One. Go on, you you have your say first, mate. I've got I've got I've got I've got I've got to say Keithley. Yeah, I'd say Keithley. I'm sorry, West Wales. I'm s- we need to get some West Wales merch, something there. Uh, Barrow Swinton, Arguin, Barrow. Barrow. Batley Sheffield. I'm going Batley home side. Yeah, yeah. Featherstone, Dewsbury, I'm going Featherstone. I'd like it to be Dewsbury, but it will be Featherstone. Rochdale, Lee, I'm going the Centurions. And I think Lee will just have a little bit too much for Rochdale, who have been improved over mm. recent weeks. League One action now, Hemel v York, I think. York by 90. York, York, York by... Plenty, plenty. 82. Oh, 82, right, okay. <laughs> and uh, and uh, Hunslet, Newcastle... Bear in mind the the results last weekend. Hmm. Newcastle. Newcastle. I'm going Newcastle. Uh, North Wales Crusaders. Doncaster at North Wales. I'm not having a say on this because I'm calling it. Just in case you didn't know. I'm going to go Doncaster, even though it is in. Uh, is it? Is it at Queen's Way? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, and uh, Oldham at Bradford. I'm going to. Go with Bradford just because they've got that little bit more to play for to get that top spot. You know, I'm going for Oldham to do York a favour. Oh, but they're a very good team, Oldham, very solid. Whitehaven, Coventry at Whitehaven. Can only see Whitehaven succeeding there, unfortunately. So, but yeah. I've got a lot of time for Coventry Bears, by the way. So can I. Uh, and uh, Workington, London Scholars, finally up in Cumbria. It's got to be a worky victory, that. Hasn't I it? think I think they'll bounce back, and uh, that is uh, the the fixtures and the predictions done and dusted, Dave. That is. That's just about us done and dusted as well. That's a pleasure, James. As a pleasure. Thanks for coming James, on, James. Thank you very much. You, you added plenty to the discussion this week, mate. Thank you. Thank you, Drew, as well as always. Oh, just uh, a quick one about this. Uh, oh yeah. This uh, we're, we're carrying the, the competition over to next week, so get the. All you have to do to be in with a chance of winning a scratch map, a rugby league, at ground up as a scratch map in association with Love Rugby League. All you've got to do is share the post on, on your, your social media channels. We'll pick a random name, whoever shares the post, and you could be in with a chance of winning. We'll announce the winner on next week's show. All you've got to do is click the share button and you're in with the chance of winning. What's not so like, you can visit all these lovely grounds. Possibly in France, possibly in Canada, maybe in Cumbria. Is that Cumbria? Yeah. No, it's, uh, the North it's the East, North that. East. It's the North East. Where's, it? Where's Cumbria, Dev? Where's it? Up here. Up here. You know what? I think we need we need uh, we're, we're geography not. with Drew. Yeah, we do. <laughs> uh, and I need my glasses on. Right. I need my glasses on. We'll go and let him get his glasses. <laughs> we'll see you again next week. Thank you very much for joining us.